Well, Andy, it is no secret that I love this movie. So I am very happy that you are taking the time to chat uh -huh. with me. Absolutely. On, I'm sure what is a very busy trip for you. Absolutely. I'm happy to <laughs> chat about it. Yeah. Um, I was there at the world premiere last night mm -hmm. uh, and really kind of want to get your thoughts and feelings about the world premiere and finally being able to see it on the big screen with an audience. What was that like for you? It was very surreal to see it on my film on the big screen. You know, I had, I don't know, it, it had been like years in the making, right? And you like always hear that from independent filmmakers of like how long it truly takes. And it, this one took a long time. And definitely luck played a factor, you know, through getting it made. Um, you know, we still like got it made, even though it took, you know, four and a half years, I think, until from like ideation to being here showing in front of an audience. But I was like very um, proud of my husband. He, Danny wrote the film, you know, it was very much a, a family, um, you know, a, event that we did together. And I was surprised at like how much the audience like laughed throughout, I think. <laughs> You know, it was like, to, for filmmakers, you know, we're like held up in our edit bays for months on end. So those jokes like don't land for me anymore. So just to like hear an audience like really, you know, give a roar for uh, some of the jokes, it was like a great, it felt great. Absolutely. I certainly found many parts comical and it's such an entertaining film. Just really, really a, a, a delightful movie to watch, even though it's, a, it's an emotional roller coaster as well. Um, I know we've talked a little bit about your feelings about like the story and kind of where it came from, but I'm curious um, what made this story the one that you wanted to be your, your feature directorial debut? You know, uh, when Danny and I were like talking about what project we wanted to, you know, I, let me rewind. It was, I had done the Hollywood game, right, where for first time filmmakers, you kind of have a couple options. Like one is like your name gets thrown into a hat for like a non-union indie and that goes, that can only go so far. And so maybe you have a couple chances that way to get to direct your first indie. So I was like close a few times and that didn't happen. And so when Danny and I started chatting about, you know, okay, well let's go, let's collaborate on a movie together and you know, well, what are we gonna do? It was like, well, they, you know, let's do something like as personal as we can to like our story. And so, you know, in thinking about our relationship and all of our ups and downs that we've had, you know, over a decade of being together, you know, definitely the idea of being parents was one of those things that we had our like, our big ups and downs with. So we thought that that might make a great movie. Um, also, there like, you know, isn't a ton of films about you know, queer people, uh, queer parents. And so we knew that there would be like a good angle there, you know, um, to try to get people to join the movie, actors, producers, you know, and all that, all that jazz. So. Absolutely. I do uh, when it gets to the topic of you and, and queer film and kind of the, the state of, of queer film today. I'm gonna get to that, but mm -hmm. um, really quick before I move on, just to talk about the movie uh, and, and the production of the film really quick, four and a half years you mentioned is a yeah. long time yeah. to, 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 uh, to produce a, a film. It, was there ever a point in that four and a half years that you're like, wow, this isn't like, I don't know if this is gonna get made or, or there's doubts, like, is this the right project? Like, tell me what the mindset was in that, in that time period. Uh, there was constant doubt, I think, about whether or not this something was going to happen. There was constant, um, you know, shattering of dreams throughout those four years. You know, it, it's very much a, you present this package to these people that maybe you've met before, maybe you haven't met. Um, you know, so I'm sending the script over, I'm sending a lookbook over, a lookbook's like got reference images and it speaks to the tone of the movie. And then I also put together like a sizzle pitch. Mm -hmm. So I like worked with a storyboard artist and made these beautiful animatics of the opening of the movie and the end of the movie. And Danny and I uh, interviewed a couple other queer parents and we like put this all together in a video. And so we like sent that package off. And so a lot of people were interested in it you know, it was like, oh, this is like really interesting. Um, you know, you, we love that, you know, you're like a, you know, a, a couple and you're, you're making this, the, or you wanna make this movie together, you know, but nobody like bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so we were very fortunate that, you know, when Zach kind of came on board, that like started the momentum to actually making the movie. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we were able to, to bring on the rest of the financing, you know, at that point when, when he signed on. 
which, is, awesome. which was you know great. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about your career in just a second, but you yeah. mentioned uh, a couple times, of course, working with Danny. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I think that that's incredible that you guys were able to pull off uh, a, a film like this. It's so well done. Um, but you know, working with family can be difficult. Uh -huh, uh, yeah. I, my mom has a restaurant and mm -hmm. my brother worked for the restaurant family business. Mm -hmm. There's certainly challenges yeah. that come with that. Uh, tell me a little bit, if you wouldn't mind, about working with Danny and, yeah. and you, know, what, uh, you know, what the best parts of that were and also maybe what some struggles were. Sure, you know, it was definitely, um, it was definitely I mean, ups and downs for sure, working mm -hmm. with your husband, right, yes. on a project. <laughs> And Danny and I both like work in totally different ways. Uh, Danny very much is like a, um, you know, he has to think about ideas and he likes to ideate on them and to go off, you know, into the bedroom or the office and like write by himself. Mm -hmm. Where I feel like I'm much more like a collaborative person. You know, I mean, that's like the nature of being a director, right? Like yeah. I like collaborate with the cinematographer and the production designer and all of the crew and the actors to like bring this together. So like naturally with writing, I was like, oh, well, let's just work on this scene together. You know, mm -hmm. like, let's just kind of like, what about this? And that's like, Danny was not that. So like definitely conflict <laughs> happens, uh, you know, in, in those sort of moments. Um, but you know, I was like, uh, he, this isn't the first like screenplay that he's written, you know, there's been like other multiple screenplays that he's written. And so this is kind of like the first one that I think both of us realized like, okay, this one like has something special to it. And you know, also it was like development execs like responded to it really well. So we were getting like good feedback from everybody that this was, this was a good one. There was something special here, you know? Um, so I'm excited to like continue, you know, a, a being married to him a, and be <laughs> like c continuing to collaborate with him on, you know, hopefully many more films in the future. Absolutely, that sounds fantastic. And I had the chance to talk with Danny on the red carpet. He yep. seems delightful, just a wonderful person yeah. to talk to. So yeah. I'm, uh, I'm very happy for you too. Um, your career, tell mm -hmm. me about what you have worked on leading up to Mattachine uh, and how this film is different from what you've done before. Right, um, so I originally started directing YouTuber videos. Like that oh. is like where I got my start. So I started doing uh, music videos for, you know, people with uh, 1 million, 2 million, 3 million subscribers. Wow. And I was able to, this was like 10 years ago, and I was able to kind of grow as they grew. So we were able to, you know, the first video that I did for them, it was, you know, a $2,000 music video. And then all of a sudden, you know, two years later, they're getting a $75,000 video wow. from a brand, you know, and so I'm able to like kind of rise with them. And so I bounced around with probably like 10 YouTubers, you know, um, and, and just making their content. And then after, after that time, I was able to kind of branch off and just start working with brands directly mm -hmm. um, and start directing commercials and, and uh, other music videos. And, but throughout that entire time, right, like my passion, my drive, my like, my, what I wanted to do with my career was always to like create films and cinema. And so during that time, had a number of movies that had come close to production. I was, there was one that I was like three months away from shooting that was like this massive like Lionsgate film. You know, it was a, a huge budget and we were like, I had like location scouted, I had like done, I had hired crew and then it like fell through because like things change at the top at these companies and they didn't want to make that movie anymore. So, um, so you know, I, that was let down. Um, you know, so I've had like those sorts of projects like in development. And then my first like real, my other narrative that I did, it was a short film um, last year, The Letterman, which premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival. Um, and so that was kind of our first like forte into like Danny and I working together on like an actual piece of, you know, on, on film and, and uh, that kind of led us to Madison, so. Very cool. Yeah. Um, that's actually a good segue into um, queer film, right? Mm -hmm. Um, this movie, uh, The Madison Family, uh, as we've said before, it's, it's such a great, diverse set of characters, right? Mm -hmm. And you get so many different perspectives of so many different lifestyles, but they all, you know, they're the chosen family. And, right. and it's, it's, it's very, it's wonderful to watch. Um, but I'm curious to know more about your perspective on the current landscape of queer film and, and, yeah, what, and what you think about that. When Danny and I, you know, uh, we're set to, to make a, a movie and we wanted to center it within our community, you know, identifying as gay and queer. 
um, we want it to be as, as close to our life as possible because we want it to be, you know, I don't want to necessarily, in this particular movie, I don't want to represent somebody else. You know, I'm like representing me and Danny in this film. Um, and so all of the characters in the film are very much real people like within our community. Um, and then, you know, so I, I felt like I, I was okay to speak for that, right? Because mm -hmm. I like knew those people. Um, and then the other thing that we talked about is that queer cinema, you know, tends to fall into the heavy, very heavy, very dramatic, like coming out, mm -hmm. um, you know, theme, mm -hmm. which is like a very crucial, um, the coming out theme and then also like accepting oneself. It's like, it's a very crucial uh, theme that we film, as filmmakers we should tell, right? Like my coming out story was like very rough, you know, it was like, it was rough. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we just wanted to make a movie that, that wasn't that, you know, we wanted to make a movie that like had gone past that and dealt with like other conflicts that happened within the, within the queer community. So that's kind of, yeah. Yeah, and I think that, that, that that's something that struck me about the film is like, you know, yes, those narratives about, you know, coming out and those, those kind of heavier narratives are, are super important. Um, but there are lots of stories to tell mm -hmm. in the queer community. And it was yeah. it was kind of refreshing to get a movie that's like, okay, here we are. This is this is this character's life yeah. and we're in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, and, and these are the circumstances yeah. that we're in um, after that particularly coming out narrative yeah. um, happens. So, um, which kind of leads me to my next question. Um, what would you like to see? And maybe, I don't know if this is something that you thought about with the future of your mm -hmm. career filmmaking, mm -hmm. but what would you like to see more of in queer film or maybe less of in queer film? I think it's, um, I think it's important still to tell you know, very passionate stories about specific people within our community, mm -hmm. you know, specifically, uh, you know, the trans community, mm -hmm. black trans people, you know, are, are constantly, are still under attack, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, those stories are still like very important to tell. Um, those like coming out, you know, or accepting oneself, um, you know, just existing. Um, you know, for other parts of the community where we have been more fortunate, I don't know. I, I would love to just be able to expand on more things that that um, you know. What's what is real life? What's happening after that coming out? That mm -hmm. process, you know, or accepting oneself. You know, Mattachine is like an interesting film where I really tried to like make sure that homophobia was like not involved in it. Mm -hmm. You know, homophobia is like important in my life. I'm like I encounter ho homophobia. I've like been been. I've, I've experienced that, right? But it's not necessarily something that I am like every day presented with, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so with this film, while we do have kind of like moments of that, you know, you kind of get some backstory with what happened with Thomas and, mm -hmm. and his family, you know, I wanted to just be able to be like uh, one, you know, a, an LGBT person could just watch it and be like, okay, this is my community and we're not necessarily like exp going through all of those traumas again, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which makes me wonder, what are you thinking about for your next project? I mean, it might be, yeah, we just had the world premiere of this film, but yeah. like, are, are you looking at what you want to do going forward with your career and like, what other stories you want to tell? Absolutely. I think that like, I'm always interested in telling um, stories from like a underrepresented community aspects. You know, I'm I, obviously I'm, I'm queer, uh, I'm dyslexic. You know, I, I have a, a huge, I'm a huge proponent of like getting mental health support. Mm -hmm. So like these are all like things that I like want to be in that are in my life that I want to be able to tell. Um, like specifically, um, the, you know, the next pitch is, so I had that short at Tribeca, right. which was about the largest collection of LGBTQ love letters sent during World War II. So was, mm -hmm. they were sent between two World War II soldiers. Um, we have over 200 love letters, um, wow. and most gay people burned their letters back then out of fear of discovery. Right. So I'm hoping to turn that into, you know, from the short, turn that into a feature or a series or, or whatnot. So that's kind of the hope. So I still want to continue, you know, I, I'm not opposed to, to not, you know, to directing something that isn't specifically queer, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm always going to have some sort of like queer spin to it, right? Because I'm queer. Yeah. So, um, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Just a couple more questions. Yeah, you're good. Um, yeah. This movie is, like I mentioned, a delight to watch. All the characters are so fun and everything is just, I just want to be 
a part of that family, right? It makes me think about uh, what production was like in working with the cast. Do you have any on-set stories or like behind-the-scenes stories that you could that you could share? Um, behind the scenes stories, it was, it was great to work with like such a stellar cast. I think mm -hmm. that I had expected a lot of, a lot of them are like incredible working actors that are like jumping from job to job, you know, like mm -hmm. they are on this show for X amount of years or on this show for X amount of years. They're doing multiple movies, you know, and so like. You never know with actors if like if they're going to be presented as like I'm coming in just for the day job, you know, mm -hmm. which is also okay, right? right. Like it, it is a job, right? Mm -hmm. But every one of the actors that were part of Mattachine mm -hmm. had some sort of like personal backstory of like why they wanted to be a part of it, yeah. and so we were all just like able to make this like really emotional connection, you know, over over those 20 days, you know, in um, November of 2021. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I guess like one of my, I loved, we like were shooting, we ended up shooting, we like shot the last week of October 21. So we're like, like a fun story. It was like the, we shot the, like a Halloween, mm -hmm. like on Halloween and like all of the crew also came like dressed up, you know, like I like <laughs> won at that, you know, like, I don't know, we were shooting, obviously there's like dramatic moments, right? right. But we were shooting like a fun movie, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it was also, I think it was like a, a really fun experience an emotional experience for me because most of the crew had been working with me for years. So like these are people who like I have worked with for you know over 12 years living in Los Angeles. You know from Monique, my key makeup artist, who has like been with me on every set. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, my one of my producers, Cameron, has been with me for three years. Sid, um, who another producer, we've worked together for eight years. You know, it's it's all of these like people that I've like formed these relationships with in LA, and I kind of brought. You know, they've all it was like, okay, we'll work on this project together, and then we don't work for the next you know few months, for the next few years together. It was like Mattachine. I like brought everybody back, mm -hmm. and I was like, this is when I need everybody's help to get this indie off the ground. So um, <laughs> it was great. That's awesome. Very cool. Uh, last question. Um, you you've spoken uh, before about how this movie uh, almost parallels the current like the situation with your life and mm -hmm. like trying to um, you know uh, move into fatherhood yourself. Yeah. Um, which you did. You have yeah. a daughter now. Yes. I want to know what is fatherhood like. Um, fatherhood is the love that I feel for my daughter is like something that I didn't know ever existed mm -hmm. um, until she arrived and the fear of like seeing her for the first time and the like you know the dad inside of me that I'm like gonna protect this little girl for the rest of my life you know is like it, it was a new feeling that you know you like you know that it's coming mm -hmm. but it's like it's it all of a sudden shows up you mm -hmm. know and so that was just incredible and the fact that it was a very weird you know we made this movie about like a gay couple becoming dads and then I like shot the movie before I was a dad right. and then she came like a month later and then I was in post for like a year like <laughs> as I was like learning to be a dad and I was like seeing so I was like seeing like a different side of the movie like in the post process you know um, so like you know it was like perfect it was great timing <laughs> you know um, that I was able to like learn from both sides right of right. like the I was able to like identify with Thomas beforehand of like wanting to become a father, mm -hmm. and then at the end, you know, I was able to to um, to see the other side. So um, it was it was crazy. That's very cool. Yeah, very, it's very cool. crazy. <laughs> very crazy. And it wasn't like, you know, that was like uh, it, obviously timing wasn't great, right? Like mm -hmm. that is like you know the, you're going through like the most stressful time in your entire life is to like make your first indie film. And then you're like, oh, great. Like, as soon as I get done with that, like, th you know, a month later, my daughter comes, which then is like, you know, but that becomes the craziest uh, time in your life. But I think that, you know, the, the process of, of having a child, we had a child through surrogacy. Mm -hmm. So that takes a long time. That takes many years of savings. Mm -hmm. You know, for our wedding, when Daniela got married, we asked people to donate to a fund wow. because that's, we had like, you know, that was something that Danny had wanted. He wanted the child. And I was like, yeah, I want a child too, but I don't want a child like right now. You know, like we'll do it later. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that's where the conflict ensued in our relationship. Um, but there was a time where, 
when we, as we started doing more research on surrogacy, we were like, well, this could take years as well. It's not just like a, a immediate, you know, there's a baby nine months later. It's mm -hmm. like you have to do all of these steps to go through it and, and jump through all these hoops. And so we were like, well, let's just start the process, mm -hmm. you know, um, like in the process of pre-production. And then it just like lined up that it was like, you know, that's crazy that it, that it happened so close to filming, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> This is it's very fascinating for me yeah. because, like I said, I really I really connected with this movie in my own place in life because this is these are conversations that me and my husband are having, mm -hmm. and you know when's the right time for us? Yeah. Is there such thing as a right time for yeah. us? You know, um, the financial part, like yeah. how are we going to make that work? Yeah. You know, so so yeah, there there is so much that goes into it. And so then you know this idea of like let's just get the process started. Yeah, I mean that kind of comes up in the movie as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's real and yeah. it's it's so interesting to like see that on screen in this particular story yeah. and and is just why I'm so appreciative of the fact that that this movie now exists yeah. and that people get to see this now yeah. because this is such a um, uh, such a nuanced side right. of, of you know queer storytelling and, and parenthood um, and I mean there's even other stories in the movie about parenthood as well right um, and, and so th there's yeah <sighs> I mean that was like the goal right like we wanted to show you know I think that there are so many different ways that people have become parents within the queer community, you mm -hmm. know? I think that like for me, uh, all of the different ways that you see somebody being parents, whether it's like a friend asks for somebody's sperm and then, then they're raising the child together, mm -hmm. you know, or if it's, um, you know, through uh, uh, surrogacy or adoption or foster care, there were like so many in our friends' lives, there were so many different paths to that. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted a film that kind of like, you know, our, our lead character explored all those paths and he was able to, to show you know the world that this is kind of how we make our families, you know, and um, yeah, it's exceptional. So, well, thanks. congratulations Thank on the you. world premiere of your film. It's wonderful. I will be telling everyone to see it whenever they can, um, and uh, and yeah, I really hope the best for for the film for you and your family.